Hey friends, my name is Austin Leibel and today we're going to be talking about real-time intelligence, the newest topic coming out of Microsoft Build centered around Microsoft Fabric. So let's get to it. Do you want to learn more about Microsoft Fabric and Azure? Visit prag.works forward slash Austin 40 and you will save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription where you will gain access to over 100 courses. Now, on to the video. Hello, so what we're gonna be talking about today is real-time intelligence and focusing on some of the different products that are inside of Microsoft Fabric, the SaaS solution for managing your entire data estate for analytical, data engineering, data science needs. And we're gonna focus on how do we start working with real-time streams of data and introduce you to a new few topics that are coming out of the real-time intelligence persona centered around Microsoft Fabric. So what we can see inside of the Microsoft Fabric workspace that I'm in right now is that we have an ability to go through and create different items in the real-time intelligence category. Coming down to my persona switcher at the bottom left-hand side of my screen, I'm able to go through and look at the different personas, and one of them is real-time intelligence. And what this gives me access to are some different topics like event houses, KQL databases, KQL query sets, event streams, real-time dashboards, and data activator reflex items. These items are all useful when you are looking to monitor real-time streams of data. Now, you might be saying, well, Austin, we don't really have real-time streams of data. And I might argue with that because a lot of organizations have some sort of SQL database that receives inserts and updates to their database very, very frequently. So you could technically use some sort of like SQL change data capture option to be able to go through and connect with your data in real time and monitor what's happening at a very, very real time scenario level. So there are a lot of industries that would benefit from working with real time intelligence. Let me kind of give you an idea of what you can find inside of real time intelligence when it comes to fabric. To begin with, if we wanted to go through and connect with a real time stream of data, the best option to do that would be something called an event stream. An event stream allows us to go through when we create one and connect with a event a stream of data and then go through and load it to a destination and potentially do some modifications and some transformations along the way with that as well. So I'm going to create a new event stream here. I'm just going to call it event stream one and I'm going to go ahead and enable my enhanced capabilities for this option. Enhanced capabilities is in preview but a lot of the features are a lot more user friendly than working with the native user interface. So when I create this event stream I'm going to get a graphical user interface Interface that allows me just to kind of point and click to where I might have some real streams of data. Now I'm going to be doing a couple more sessions around this real-time intelligence, but to start with today, we're just going to make this super simple. And if you're interested in following along, go create your own event stream of data. And then what I would like you to do is add in a sample data set. So we're going to go through, connect with some data that's streaming, and we're going to be able to kind of simulate what you can do with this tool. So when I click this option here in the middle of my screen, use a sample data set, I'm going to see I have three different uh, categories I can use. I can use a bicycle, I can use some yellow taxi or some stock market. We're just going to use the bicycle. It's pretty simple to understand. And I think you'll be able to kind of comprehend exactly what it's doing very, very quickly. So I'm going to choose the bicycle stream of data, and I'm going to give this a source name and call it just bicycle, something very simple. And I'm going to add that source. Now, just like that, we've gone through, we've connected with a stream of data. Now, if you are connecting with your own stream of data, whether it be coming from like event hubs or Azure IoT or some other source, you would need to have all your configurations, your connections and things like that. But for our purposes, this is going to be great at simulating, again, just some real-time data that we can work with, then we can start to query for ourselves as well. So now I go through and I connect with this source, and I go through and then I have this streaming data coming into this event stream object inside of Fabric. What I can now go through and start to do is load this to a new destination. Now you might be saying, okay, well, where can you load this to? Well, when I click on the drop down option here, you can see you can actually load this item to a lake house. So if you're trying to create some sort of medallion architecture with a lake house, you have an ability to go through and just load this directly to your lake house or you can start to work with a KQL database. The advantages of such would be able to go through and scale against massive amounts of data. We're talking petabytes worth of data, 
billions of records that you might be receiving from these different IoT devices or potentially some sort of e-commerce website that you can go through, connect with, and then query very, very efficiently using the KQL language. That stands for the Custo Query language. So we're going to go through and we're actually going to load this not to a KQL database or a lake house right now. I'm going to go through and create another item inside of my real time intelligence workspace. So I'm going to come back to this in just a few moments. Going over to real time intelligence. Now I want to be able to go through and create an event house. Now, an event house, that kind of terminology, what it means is that you can have multiple sorts of databases stored in one location, kind of like a lake house in some aspects where you can have different types of data from different sources all stored in one location. But we're going to go through and work with this event house, which is going to have underneath a, a KQL database that we can actually load these different records to. So I'm going to call this my bicycle event house. I'm going to go ahead and create this new object, and then we'll kind of get it sewer around the user interface here in a few moments. Now, very similar to a lake house, there are going to be some items inside of our workspace that are specifically tied to this event house. So coming back over here really quickly, what you're going to ultimately see here is there's a bicycle event house. And then on top of that, or underneath that, if you will, there's going to be a KQL database also called bicycle. So we'll see that appear in just a few moments here. So this KQL database using bicycle, this is where I ultimately want to go through and store my data. Now you might be saying, Austin, storing billions of records, petabytes worth of data is going to be very, very expensive. Even if you're trying to store this on like a one link or something like that, right? But usually with this type of data, you don't necessarily keep it all, right? There's going to be some sort of retention period. There's going to be uh, an ability to have some cash storage in your one lake for this type of data and also to decide what you actually want to keep or whether you even want to store it in your one lake. You have a lot of configuration, some options you can choose whenever you use this sort of tool. So using this bicycle database here, I'm going to go back over to my event stream. And in this event stream, uh, I need to go back and add in my sample data again. I'm going to go through and kind of make sure everything's good to go there. Uh, source bicycle. And then I'm going to go through and load this to my KQL database. Now, I'm just going to call this again bicycle. Uh, we'll call this uh, destination, bicycle destination. This is going to be in my real time intelligence workspace and then using that bicycle KQL database. Now let me move myself out of the way here really quickly so you can get a really good view of all this at the bottom too. The destination table. Now currently in this KQL database, we do not have any sort of tables for ourselves. So I'm going to go through and create a new table and you guessed it, I'm just gonna call it bicycle again. So to make it really, really simple, we're at the bicycle database and the bicycle table. So we're gonna create that new table and it's going to be in JSON format. So it's going to be receiving this data in JSON. I'm going to save this as my destination. So again, we're pulling this source from a, an event stream that's running already at this sample data. And then we're going to load it directly to a destination. There's a couple other transformations we can do. And we'll look at that in a future module as well. But let's go ahead and publish this uh, option right here. And that's going to start giving us some ability to receive this data inside of our bicycle event house. So going back over here now, let this run for a few moments. It's going to start running in the background and putting data here. Now, what we're ultimately going to see inside of this KQL database called bicycles is if I want to go through and look at the database that's inside of this event house, I can open that up. Again, coming back over to our real-time intelligence hub here, we do see there are two different items. One is an event house and one is a KQL databases. And just kind of like a lake house with the SQL analytics endpoint and the semantic model, you can go through and have different options that are kind of directly tied to that main architectural component there. So going to my bicycle database, you'll notice over here on my navigational pane, it does open up a new item. These are two different items. There's the event house and there's the KQL database or databases that can exist inside of that. Now we can go to our bicycle table over here. We can actually get data many different ways. And we'll look at this in the next video of how we could get data from a source of something like event hubs or using an event stream, or maybe even using some other source of data to go through from an external 
journal like uh, Amazon Kinesis or Google Pubs Up uh, or potentially a Confluent Kafka. So we have some different options here. But now going over here to this, if I do like a little refresh here, I'm going to see that there is my bicycle table inside of this KQL database. And when I click on that, I'm ultimately going to have some data that starts coming inside of it. It already has all of my columns that are mapped in. Now, while we're waiting for a little bit of data to get loaded here, what I'll tell you about this kind of set of data so that we have an understanding of what it is, is this is essentially going through and seeing one of those kind of like scooter bicycle rentals that you can go through like a big city and you can kind of check one of those bikes out and then take it to a different location and just drop it off and go about your day to get across a large city very, very quickly. This is monitoring every single kind of fact that this goes through and looks at, hey, we're going to uh, check out in uh, London on the North End and we're gonna go somewhere else. We're gonna go to the West End or the uh, somewhere else in London. So taking one of those bicycles, checking in, checking out, going through and uh, having that run for us at, um, at all times. So we're going to be monitoring every single check-in that's happening. And this could theoretically happen in a big city like London very, very frequently. So kind of coming back over now to this, what we want to see is that we're ultimately going to have some data that's loaded in here now. Only 86 records right now we can see, but there's going to continue to be a new stream of data. This is working with you know, massive amounts right here, but over time it could ingest quite a large amount of data if necessary. So looking at these 86 records here, what if I wanted to understand what is in the records. I want to have an idea of, okay, what is this doing? Well, what I have an ability to do is write using the user interface, use this query table option. So using a query table, I can select different types of queries that I want to author using the KQL language. Now you might be saying, Austin, I don't know KQL. I know a little bit of SQL. You want me to go learn a whole new language and now just to work with this type of data? Let me come back to that in just a few moments. So to begin with, let's go and query this table and just say we want to show any 100 records. So when I click that option here, it's going to open up a flyout on the right hand side of my screen. And this is essentially a way to go through and query this bicycle table here. So bicycle take 100, that's essentially going through and giving us a sample number of records. So we're getting out 100 records from this bicycle table. And we're going to be able to then go through and see what our data looks like and have an idea. Hey, this monitoring station on Panton Street at the West End at this longitude and latitude has no bikes and no empty docks or has this many bikes and this many empty docks. So we're going to be able to monitor this in real time. Now you might be saying, okay, well, that's cool. What if I wanted to see how many records I had on this bike table? Well, they actually kind of give you the code to be able to do that too. Just kind of input your table name right here, bicycle, and just say you want to do a count. This language is pretty easy to learn, even if you're like not very familiar with it. Now you might be saying, okay, but I don't want to have to go through and learn something. I just want this to work. What is awesome with this tool is you have an ability to go through and write out a SQL statement. I want to select star from the bicycle table here. Run, highlight that query, run that. Just like that, we can go through and see all 175 records. You can do some manipulation to this as well. Where the neighborhood, so make sure I spell neighborhood right. Oh, it's in the English format with the U and the boar. Neighborhood is equal to, and let's just say Chelsea. Where the neighborhood is equal to Chelsea. So we're only looking to see records there with that SQL. Just like that, we've gone through and done some filtering. So the ability to work with the T-SQL, Transact SQL language from SQL Server in this tool is really going to open this up to a wider variety of individuals who are looking to work with KQL databases and start getting started with the streaming data very, very quickly, easily, and efficiently for themselves in their organization. Well, hopefully you've uh, been a little bit impressed with all the offerings that real-time intelligence is going to have. As we continue throughout the rest of this series here, we're gonna go through and explore what else we can do with this KQL database and this KQL language, including creating some KQL dashboards so that we can easily monitor what's happening inside of this KQL database across 
a vast amount of records. And then we're also going to see how we can connect with some additional sources of data and bring that into our architecture as well. Let's say you already have an Azure Event Hub running or an Azure IoT device running. You can go through and connect with that very easily. Now, one last thing I want to leave you with before we kind of close out the day is we want to go through and we want to provide others the ability to access this stream of data in our organization. This is actually very, very easy to accomplish. I'm going to go one more over time back to my environment. We're going to talk about the real time hub. So inside of my environment here, I have something on my control panel called the Real Time Hub. And this was just announced at Microsoft Build just a few weeks ago at the recording of this video. So what the Real Time Hub is going to provide me is an ability to go through and see all of the current streams of data that I have inside of my fabric environment. So you're going to see different data streams here, and these are coming from different environments that I've worked with uh, before, previous to this video. And then I also have a bunch of micro Microsoft sources. So what you'll see here is I have an ability to go through and connect with an Azure SQL database change data capture connector as well. I can also come through here and connect with an Azure event hubs. This is basically using just my Azure subscriptions and my resource groups that I have available to me inside of the Azure portal. And it's allowing me to go through and gain access to these streams of data that I already have that exist with just a couple point and clicks. The last item here that we have are fabric events. And this gives us an ability to monitor monitor Azure Blob storage events, or even Fabric Workspace item events, like creation of specific items, so that we can go through and react to systems that are happening inside of our larger tenant. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you are into this real-time intelligence. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. I'm so excited to see where the future lies with real-time intelligence and working with KQL. Hopefully I will see you in the next one.